Today we're going to talk about some good old chain gang fishing. When you're in confinement, this is the number one way you get things to and from different cells. So I'm going to go ahead and break it down to y'all, show y'all how you make a fishing rod. The line, the whole thing. Down, man. Suitcase this, my cell phone, I'm a charger, don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it. Next time I see you ass, you gon' need airlifted. Now, even though this ain't a prison door, you know, normally a prison door, you have the window cut out right here so you can see into the quad. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this old beat up card I found, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna show y'all from one step to another how it is we actually fish in confinement. Well, what you do is you would grab your ID card and you stick it through the tip of the door like this. And when you stick it through the tip of the door like this, you will have your fishing line tied to it, of course. And then you, you let it drop out like this so it'll be out there in the quad. As you see, I don't know if you heard it, but it did hit the ground. Okay, so now you would have your fishing line tied to that so that way when you pull it like this you see it dangling in the air on the outside of the window right here all right when you go like this it is dangling and it's tied to the string all right so now i'm going to get inside the bathroom and i'm going to break it down step by step for y'all you already know man k for all tv in the building man y'all go ahead hit that like subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first all right so for the most part i told y'all i was going to do a little video on fishing you know how people fish in confinement um you know, for people that don't know what that is, is that's basically how you get items from cell to cell, whether it be, you know, kites or food or books, newspapers, envelopes, etc. Anything possible from cell to cell, even tobacco, you know, knives, no matter what it could be. It could be a, a, a wick, which is toilet paper set on fire so you could spark you a cigarette or whatever it may be. They do fishing. I got a bunch of little things here, whatever, that I'm going to show y'all exactly how we do it. All right, so for the most part, you grab you a sheet, all right? You got your white sheet or whatever, and you take the thread out of the sheet. Well, right here, I got some actual thread, you know, because I don't have a white sheet. So you take the thread out of, a, out of a white sheet. It's gonna be more than one piece, and you just keep tying it, it together. Now, the best thread to use when you do this in confinement is actually the blue thread that comes out of your blues that they issue you, whether it be your pants or your shirt, okay? Basically, on the sides where the white line is, on the blues here in Florida Department of Corrections, or up here on the sleeve and down here on the sides, you'll see a zigzag pattern of thread. That is the strongest thread that you can use. You can also use thread from a towel, but it breaks too easily. So the whole thing is, if you plan on having your you know, your, your, your fishing line, you know, for a while, you want to use the best thread you can come across. Okay. And there are a lot of people rather use the blue thread out of the blues than the white out of a sheet because it's harder to see. You got the officers, they walk around, they pop your line, you know, they'll, they'll yank it from you. You know, you might get snagged on something and then it break. So the blue one is the best one to use. But for the most part, I'm going to use this thread right here. Okay, and what we do in there is, you know, um, I'm gonna show y'all how you make a, uh, I'm gonna show you how you make the car first. All right, in there, we use the toothpaste tube. Now this is some regular Colgate right here, okay? What you do is, you know, I'm gonna use the rest of this tube right here to show y'all. You actually, you take all the toothpaste out, you know, you push it in the toilet or whatever, whatever your sink, however you want. You know, this is basically, you know, just to empty it, just to get everything out of it, okay? You know, because you need it, you need it, you need it empty. And you're not going to use this whole thing. You ain't going to use this whole thing at all, you know? Basically, your car, that's what it's called. Your car is going to be this end right here, all right? So I have a razor right here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut me a decent piece of this so I can make my car, Okay? All right, right here, this is your car. This little piece right here. Now, what you do is you open it up. Let me get some toilet paper because it gets dirty. It gets your toothpaste everywhere, you know. You actually open this up and you wanna stuff something for weight in there. People use soap, you know, you can use actual, you know, you can use actual, you know, 
toilet paper like this, like I'm using, and then you just add a little bit of water to it. So that way the, 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 the toilet tissue gets wet. You know, you just add a little bit of water to it. Okay. So that way you can actually push it in there. All right. And this is going to make it to where this is the weight. All right. Now, this is the weight. This is what's going to be sliding across the floor from the other end of the line. Okay. So once you go like this, what you do is, is, you, is you put a hole through both sides right here on the edge. Just put a little hole through both sides. So that way, once you decide to put the line on here, you didn't, you didn't, you stick the line through the, through the hole here, through the hole here. So this will be hanging from the bottom of your string. Okay. Now you get a pencil, you wrap your line all the way around the pencil. So you have, it looks like a thread line. It's just, it's just, it's just, that's your fishing line. Okay. But we'll get to this in a second after I put, I'll put this on there in a second. Now, now that I made the car, okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show y'all real quick how you do it from the top tier. If you're on the top tier, I'm going to show you how it is you would, you would manage to fish. You would get your line out the door and everything. Okay, now that y'all have seen a little video and have a little, you know, idea what it is I'm speaking on. I'm going to go ahead and before I put it through the door to show you like how we did it from the top tier, I'm going to go ahead and make a fishing pole. Now, when you make a fishing pole, all it takes is simple pieces of paper. You know, it depends on how many, how long you want the fishing pole to be. Okay. And then this fishing pole is actually what you use, you know, like it's, it's a mission to throw a line out the door to bring someone's in, you know, if they slide over there and they land it by your door, it's a mission to send yours out there, to, you know, to catch their line. Basically, you want to tangle each other. So that way, when you, when you, when you tangle your line over their line and you pull, you can pull their line into your room and then you put on there what you want or take off there, what you, they sent, you know, stuff like that. So you make a fishing pole. Okay. And the way you do this is I'm going to show you step by step. You get a piece of paper, all right, and it's actually going to be longer than this piece of paper. What you do is you start at the very corner of the paper, real small. You want to cuff it real small, and you're going to actually roll it up like this, okay? So what you do is you start real small right here in the corner of the paper, okay? And then you roll it up. Once you cuff it, you roll it up. That way, the, the, the smaller you start it when you roll it, the tighter the paper is as it's rolling up. You, you know, you don't want a loose fishing pole. You know, see, it's going to be like this. See how I'm rolling it? You don't want a loose fishing pole because the looser the fishing pole is, the more pieces you have to add to it. All right? So you just go like this, and then you roll it up little by little. All right? That way I'm going to show y'all when I stick my line out the door, how I get it in. All right. So you just want to roll it up like this. You want to keep it as tight as you can as you're rolling it because it'll seem to come undone a lot, which it does. You know, some people don't even use fishing poles. You know, they rather send their line out there every time. You know, you could, you could do that, you know. So you roll it up like this for the most part. Okay, and then when you get to the bottom part like this, you do it like an envelope. You lick the paper like an envelope. So that way when you twirl it right here, it'll actually stick to the other side. You know, now, in confinement, you know, if you have tape from like your envelopes or something like that, and you plan on keeping your fishing pole, you know, you could just tie tape around it if you want to. Because a lot of times, you know, the, the saliva alone, and after a while, it'll come off again, you know? So this would be one part of the pole. Okay, so that would be one part of the pole. 
right here, okay? Then I would grab another one and do the same thing. Like I said, it depends on how big of a pole you want. I've seen people put like 20 pieces of paper together and stick it under their, their door and be way out there in the middle of the day room trying to grab a pack of sardines, you know? And then the way you do it once you get the pole going is on the tip of the pole when you bend it, you put a staple. A couple, you can put a couple staples, same thing with the car. You have a couple staples hanging out this right here so that way when you sling it, any other person's line that comes around or anyone you're out there going to meet, there will be staples sticking out so that way it, it'll grasp their string, their, their line, their fishing line, you know? And then um, this part right here though, I probably only need two of these so I won't, I won't have to make that much bigger of a pole. See what I'm saying? Because it's such small, you know? So you go like this, you just roll it like this. And it's actually getting bigger and bigger. Like that. And then you, like an envelope. Like I said, if you plan on keeping your pole, use tape. Because sometimes saliva don't work. And then what you do is you stick this one in this one. See that? Look at that. That's a fishing pole right there. You know, and then you would like, you would, you would put a staple in the end of this right here. You turn it like that. Just like that. And you put a staple in the end of it. You want it to where the sturdier and the stronger it is, the more strong of a line it can pull in. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and show y'all how we used to do it. Now, as you see, I put my string wrapped around a big pen. Okay, I got an old card right here or whatever. I cut a hole in it right here because the IDs we use, your ID has a hole in it. That's where the clip sticks on. So I found this old card laying on the ground and decided to use it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how we use this just to get the line where we want it in position. Okay, so like I had showed y'all just a second ago on the outside of the door. You want to stick this while it is on the string through the top crack of the door up here. Okay, because in prison, that is the only way, the, the only thing that will fit through the crease at the top of the door that is skinny enough is going to be your ID. Now, once you get it through the top of the door like that, it is going to be hanging on the outside of the door that you will see through the window right here. And the, your ID will be dangling on the outside of the door, but the string will be coming up and over and will be in your hand. All right, so as of right now, my line is through the top of the door, hanging on the other side. I didn't let it hit the ground yet. You can hear it though. You hear it hitting that? That means it's dangling out here right now on the other side of this door. So what you do now is, the whole reason that you do this is so you can get it out the door, then you, you hang on to the line, and then you drop your, your, your pole, like that, okay? Now, now let's get to the ground view and I'll show you. Your pole is going to grab the ID, which I already pulled it in right here. Your pole is going to pull the ID now under the door. You see? You see how when I pull it, it's pulling the pen? So what that means right there is, that means that my line is now over the door and back under it. Okay? Just like that. If I were to pull it, you see how it's moving the, 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 the line right here? If I were to pull it, you see it? Okay, now I'm gonna explain to you how we make a ramp. Okay, so what we use to make a ramp is just a file folder like this, all right? And you literally stick a book, like right here I got the 33 Strategies of War. You can literally stick a book under the door, right under the edge of the door. You can even use a book alone to make a ramp if you stick it out the door open like this that'll be your ramp right there okay or you stick a book under the door and then you stick your file folder like this under the door right on top of this right just like that so that way when you yank your line when you yank the line since you sent it through the top and dropped it down and you pulled it back under the door with your fishing pole when you pull, it'll pull it under the door. So you only use the ID or your card or whatever to get it to go through and come back under, all right? Now, 
Once you get it to come back under the door, you then pop your line, like I did this. You pop your line, and then you put your car on there, which I have my car on there right now, okay, which was the toothpaste, the bottom of the toothpaste thing that has weight. See, the bottom of the door is a bigger gap than the top of the door. So you had to use something skinnier to go through the top of the door with weight, so when you let it go, it'll fall and hit the ground. Pull it in with the pole, and then pop your line, put the car in there, Put your ramp if you're trying to go either over the railing to land down there on the bottom tier, or even if you're trying to fly over the over the railing to the cells on the other side of the top tier. Either way, then you would put your ramp, and then basically what you do is you you get you get to the back of the cell, you get you cut you some slack with your string, and then you yank. When you yank down on it, it is gonna yank it from under the door. And it's going to hit your ramp. The moment it hits your ramp, once you yanked it, it hits the ramp, you let go of your line. When you Once it hits the ramp and you let go, it's going to do nothing but fly. It'll land on, it'll wrap around the pole on the top tier, or it'll fly over the top tier and land up there. It'll hit someone's door over there, and then it's their job to, you know, work with you because fishing, it takes time now. It isn't a one, two, three thing. Anyone that's been to prison will tell you, fishing isn't a one, two, two, three. It isn't like that. Even if you're going to the cell next to you. But it is kind of easier going to the cell right next to you because all you do is you get against the wall right on the edge of, here's the door. You get against the wall right here and you hold your line against the wall. So that way when you sling it out the room, since you're holding your line against the wall, it's going to make it go like that, it's gonna actually make it spin because you're holding the line. It ain't going straight out. You know, you go like this and then you swing it outwards and it's gonna go under your door out there and then into their door. Okay, so now you see what I'm speaking on, what it is I'm trying to, you know, break it down. Now, I've seen it all on these fishing lines, all right? I've seen important things, the pettiest shit, you know, anything you could think of, you know, like um, one time the gang sergeant and them, they were gonna come blitz my cell for K-Frog TV. They were gonna come raid my cell. I seen them all coming outside my window. I had an eyeglass case, I put my phone into the eyeglass case, Screamed to my dog through the vent, send your line, send your line. He sent his line over to me. I tied my fucking phone on there and sent it out there. And then he sent it across. They came and blitzed my cell and his cell was looking and didn't find nothing. Okay. I've seen it to where people were fishing sandwich bags of cherry tomatoes. There'd be a bag of cherry tomatoes out there on the floor that someone didn't want that was on an RDP or a CFO bag. Which those are people that don't eat regular trays. They get a special bag. It usually is like sardines. And it might be a, a bag of carrots or cherry tomatoes or, you know, shit like that. So people are fishing just things like that. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be nighttime. It could be 3 o'clock in the morning. People are out there fishing. You know, like that's just how it is, you know. And another thing you do when you got the fishing, when you're going like this and you see it on the outside, it's easier because there's a window in your door so you see where it's dangling at you know i can't show you that through a door that doesn't have a jail cell window so as you're dangling it like this dangling it like this you actually get it to where it starts slinging a little bit and then you'll make it bounce off your flap it'll bounce off your flap and go over the railing and when it goes over the railing now you got it hanging over the railing when you pull it it's down there swinging it's swinging so as you pull it you just keep pulling and letting it go and it starts getting a rhythm of going like this down there over the rail. And then as it's going like this, as you're pulling and it's going like this, you swing it. And then once you feel like you got a good enough swing to where you see out your window, you actually see your fishing line over the railing swinging like this. Once you see it and it's going back down to where you can't see it because it's going under the walkway that your cell's on, you then let it go. When you let it go, since it got such a high swing when it's coming back and you let it go, it swings under the walkway and it'll dead ass hit the door that is in the cell right under you. Boop, it'll hit their window and then they'll get on the ground with their fishing pole or their line and their own car and try to get it and pull it in. And then they tie whatever on there or whatever, boom, 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 and then you just pull it back up. 
but you got to be careful when you're pulling it up and it comes over the railing because if not, it'll double loop and it'll be hanging at your, your fuck. Like you'll literally get it all the way up there. Spend a mission to get it and it'll get double looped so quick like that. People's lines pop left and right. Um, people intercept. Like if you're trying to send someone cigarettes, you know, or something like that, someone else sees it. Someone else will send their car. At first, I didn't know I liked sardines. So my whole bid, I didn't eat sardines. I refused to eat goulages that had them in there or anything until my last box bid when I was already in there like 180 days. I decided to try sardines. But before that, my bunkie owed me 18 meals. He owed me 18 trays. We were gambling in the room. So every day he got the RDP bag, which was religious diet program. They call it CFO now. He gave me his bag, but I didn't eat sardines. So I would literally sling my sardine pack under the door and it'd land down there in the bottom tier and I'd be like, free fish on the market, free fish, just to see everyone sending their fishing lines out there trying to cuff and get that sardine. You know, that's the type of shit I used to do, you know, but I'm talking about at nighttime when all the lights go out and it's pitch dark, you can't even see your line. You'll see envelopes going like this in the air from one side of the top tier to the other. From the bottom, you'll see, it look like magic because you can't see the line. The officers, they pop your lines. A lot of doors, they got the guards on the bottom of it, which is like spikes like this. So that way it'll pop your line when your line touches it and shit like that. So they try to prevent you from fishing, you know, but it is a thing to where, you know, it's how you get things done. You might need something that that person has in that cell. He, you might have something he needs, you know, and that's just it. Everybody works together. Okay. When I was at Calhoun, they were actually giving people DRs for getting caught fishing. All right. Just like you got that little window on your door, they also have magnets that are the same size as that little window that is stuck against the top above the doors. Not each door. There might be five magnets in this pile, one here, one here, but they have magnets in the dorm to where they could cover your window. Because you damn sure can't fish with your window covered. That's why I can't do a video like I want to with this door because I don't have a cutout like a jail one. So they'll block you and they'll write you DRs for catching you fishing. They'll sit back and watch the cameras and watch you fish sometimes and then come blitz your cell. Or they'll just act like they don't see it and then they'll jump and snag your line real quick. You know, um, I think I told this before in one of my other videos, but I was fishing real late night one time. My homeboy downstairs was sending me a milk, peanut butter squeeze, and some oatmeal. It was like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I was down there. I finally got it down there. And um, as I was pulling it up, it was too heavy to lift over the rail, over the rail, and my line popped right at the tip top of the railing, and it fell all the way down there. When it fell all the way down there, I told the officer, I say, Sarge, man, man, why you don't go ahead and grab my, my food down there? Da -da -da. Some officers will fuck with you and do it, some won't. He finally brought it to me. He was like, yeah, just, he's like, I got you after count. Never did it. Had to wait till the next count and remind him again. Man, I'm hungry, Sarge. You said you were finna get it. It's down there. You gonna see... He literally brought it up there and dropped it on my floor, and I had to get it from by my door. He didn't open my flap or nothing. He dropped it by my door. I got my pole. I pulled it all in little by little. My milk was busted from when it hit the ground. It was a carton milk, the square ones, kind of like the little yoo that come in a little carton. And then, you know, since it's made out of little cardboard or whatever it is, the bottom of it, you can open it. And then the top, you can open it. You can flatten it. So the milk's still in there. That's how it was when it was wrapped up. But it was too heavy. But it busted. He gave it to me. Um... It busted, it had a, like a little mini leak in there, about half of it drained, you know, but he still gave it to me. Now, it's even harder when the person you're trying to fish to or the person that's trying, you know, if both of y'all don't have a line, it's even harder because you become a professional at it. You got to get in their cell, basically, when they don't have a line. So I got to the point to where I was good to where like, I'm at your door, like you might be sleeping or you might be laying down, I know you ain't got no line, and all of a sudden you'll hear like that. And then you'll be like, what? And then I'll be like, boy, I'm at your door. You look, and it's like let, literally right there. You can stick your finger under there and grab it. Sometimes I can get it come right up under your door. There's some professional fishers in confinement, and it all starts with that simple. This is another toothpaste thing, but... It all starts with the toothpaste thing. Some people use pieces of the state issue soap wrapped in paper, like regular paper that I use to make this. They use that and they tie it real good. They use that as a car. I've seen people use a whole deodorant, a whole deodorant bottle as a car, you know, but the whole mean, you can use anything, a whole chunk of a sheet as your string, your fishing line, but 
you want it to where the, the officers can't see it, you know, to where when they look, they just see a damn pack of sardines run across the floor, you know, but they know it's, it's fishing. They know what it is you're doing. That's why I threw these little clips in here to give you an idea of what fishing is. It's kind of hard to do it myself here on the streets when I don't have the same setup that they use to prevent you from doing it. And here it ain't set up to prevent you from doing it, but I don't have the right way to do it. So I threw the little clips in there or whatever. That's what it is. That's, that's how you fish in prison. Florida Department of Corrections, that's exactly how you get things from point A to point B. Okay? And um, it sucks because it'd be the littlest things, but it makes you kill time. You'll literally be trying for five hours from cell two to get to six bottom. You might have to send it to three different cells just to get down there. Or you could just send it straight down there and see like three other dudes trying to get your line to bring it in there. You know, and it may take that many hours just to get it, but it makes time go by and it'd be something for so simple as an envelope. You know, it could be anything. It could be, you know, when it comes to fishing too, another thing, if you're good, you don't just play middleman all the time. You know, people will pay you and break you off to fish. So like if I'm in cell five and someone's in cell nine, and then the, like the way the tier's shaped, it, it's, it's like a straight line like this, and then it curves. So it's shaped like an oval, and then there's all cells. If I'm over here, and then they're down here, but they got to get over here, they can't get around that bend, they will hit me up to fit, for me to send my line. I'll bounce it off the railing under the floor, bounce it off the uh, little side guard that's on the edge of the railing, Bang, and it'll literally coast all the way down in front of their cell. They'll catch it, tie whatever they want on there. I'll pull it back into mine. It'll have two, it'll have two packs on there. It'll have what's mine for fishing for them, and it'll have the pack that's or whatever it is that's going to the other person. And then I'll boom, 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 and then I'll send my kite to them. You never send what it is on the kite. I mean, on the the fishing pole, you know, on your on your line. You never would tie like if it's a if it's a bomb of molly or some tobacco or some tunchi or anything, no matter what it is, a kite, whatever you're writing, none of that. You always use your car and get it to where you touch down inside their room to where they get a hold of it and then they could tie their line to yours, you know, or whatever, and then you pull their line all the way down into yours and then you tie the bomb on there and then when they pull it, it goes straight there or vice versa because you don't want the officers intercepting kites. You don't want officers knocking y'all off for no tunchi, no dope, no molly because it clearly shows what cell it's coming out of. You see what I'm saying? So you never use what it is you're trying to send as your car. Instead, you use, like I said, parts of the, the, the toothpaste thing is the main thing. They give you state-issued toothpaste. It's a clear tube. You just cut you apart off like this. We didn't have a razor, which you some people have razors in the cells. But in confinement, a lot of people don't have razors. So literally what you do is you just rip it. You just bite it and rip it off. You just find a way to rip it off. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, I used to always bite it off until I learned you can literally use a piece of string. All you do is you literally grab this and you hold it tight. You have your bunkie hold it or you stick it between your knees like this and you get a piece of string and you go like this and it cuts right through it like butter. You just go like that back and forth and it cuts it. Believe it or not, a string is very powerful and can saw right through things. And that's one of that's how I started doing it. I learned that after my long confinement bid. You know, at first when I was just going there for 30 days, shit like that, 45 days, you know, I would always rip it and tear it. But then once on one of my 60-day bids, I learned with a string. And ever since then, I just started teaching people. That's how you do it. Save you some time. Okay? So anyways, for the most part, that is the fishing video. It is. This is my fishing line right here. I'll show y'all one more time. That's it. That's my car. That's it. You know, people put crushed soap in here. Anything for weight. Anything for weight. But this is my car. That's it. So there y'all have it, man. Y'all done seen it. You know what I'm saying? K-Frog TV. I appreciate y'all watching a little video. Um, Y'all hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see y'all very soon, man. It's Frog.